No, that's simply not going to do. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. In this video, we are going to take a look at recording some guitars with Tone Bridge here in Garage Band iOS. Welcome aboard if it's your first time here. My name is Pete. This is Studio Live today, where my goal is to help you create, record, and release your best music. And today, yes, we're back over here in Garage Band. We're going to be taking a look at Tone Bridge, which is a guitar amp simulator, tone generator whatever you want to call it. It's super cool. I've been neglecting it for far too long. That's all going to change here today in this one. So uh, yeah, strap on in because it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, what have we got coming up? The format. We're going to show you how it all works. So how to use it. And it's super simple. Spoiler alert on that one. We're going to record some guitar and some bass. Yes, we're going to record guitar and bass parts right here into GarageBand using AUV3 uh, as a plug-in with ToneBridge. I'm going to show you how to change the tone. So that's one of the cool things about ToneBridge is you can use it as an audio unit plug-in, meaning you're not stuck with the tone you get at the start. You can change it up and then we're going to open it up to some Q&A. But let's jump in and uh, talk a little bit about what is ToneBridge and uh, how do you get started with it? Well, it is an app. You can download it from the App Store on iOS for iPad or for iPhone. And uh, once you install it, you can use it here in GarageBand. But let's take a quick step back because uh, did I have it loaded up here? Probably not. Uh, here is the actual uh, the actual application. Now, I'm not going to go into a heap of detail. This is going to be more of a practical demonstration. But there is so much here under the hood. You can not only use all the different guitar presets and pedals from a bunch of different popular bands and popular songs, you can go into the workshop and create your own preset. You can save your own favorites in here. You can create your own pedal boards. And as you can see here, I'm logged in. So these uh, is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Ultimate Guitar. And uh, Ultimate Guitar, if you're not familiar with them, you probably don't play guitar. So Ultimate Guitar is the repository of tabs and chords for guitar and for guitar songs. And they are the geniuses, the genii behind ToneBridge. So please go in and have a play. Jade Star, who's a friend of the channel and a moderator here, has done a complete deep dive into ToneBridge, which I'll get her to link in the chat here and I'll throw down in the description if you happen to be watching on the replay and you want to learn more about ToneBridge. But uh, for now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to swap on back over here to GarageBand. This is where we're going to be hanging out. Let's just... Uh Yep, make sure our audio is all still working and coming through. And it is. We are going to take a step back and show you how to add this here into GarageBand, though, because I've already added my track just so I could do that uh, cool, funky intro. But we're going to delete it and start from scratch. Here's what we're doing. We're going to record a song. I want two rhythm guitars, I want a lead guitar, and I want a bass guitar. This is a pretty common situation, right, when you're recording. And I'm going to do all of these using just ToneBridge. No amp simulators, nothing else, just ToneBridge. This is how we're going to do it. We've already got our drummer here. We've got Anders, because of course we do. It's a rock song. We need Anders as our virtual drummer. He's got a uh, an eight beat, so two bar count in. One, two, three, four, then we're going to rock on and we're going to play our guitars. But first, we have to set up our guitars. Now, if you've never plugged a guitar into your iPhone or iPad, it's actually a super simple thing to do. There's a bunch of different devices that you can choose to use to do it. And if you go to this place, studiolivetoday.com slash gear, all of the audio interfaces I use and recommend are over there. So the Steinberg UR22C, if you want something a bit cheaper, you can go to the iRig and get the iRig Pro or the HD. Here's the one caveat. If you use an older iRig type device that plugs in via the headphone jack, you're going to get a noisier signal. So especially if you dial in some really heavy distorted tones, you're going to get a bit more distortion, un unwanted distortion in your guitar signal. So if you want the cleanest possible guitar sounds, go for a digital interface that connects via USB or via lightning and you'll be good to go. But I know some very cool guitarists, many of who are here in the chat right now, who actually just use one of the old analog iRigs and they get some pretty devastating tones. So it is definitely not essential. And uh, by the way, speaking of those who are here live, if you do have questions, we'll get to a Q&A section at the end. So we're going to do the demo and then we will dive into some Q&A. All right, back to our track. Here we are. We're going to 
Oh, I've got, this, I've got the one mouse I'm using for both. Let's, uh, let's add this. Now, this is different from adding a guitar using the guitar amp sim. If you've used GarageBand before, if we hit the plus button here, you might be familiar that we can go to the amp and we can dial in our guitar tones. And you know what? The GarageBand amp sims, pretty darn cool. I actually really dig them. I've used them on a lot of songs and they sound cool. But today, we're talking tone bridge. So, to set up Tone Bridge, we actually want a completely clean audio track. To get that, we go to Audio Recorder, More Sounds, Fun, and Clean. Why is Clean under Fun and not under Studio or Producer Effects? Apple, that's why. So there you go. We've got our clean sound in there. Nothing coming through, right? Well, there is. You can see we've got our input gain there and we've dialed in. I've already dialed in the input gain on my, uh, on my audio interface, but we don't have the monitoring on. So if we turn on monitoring, like so now... And there is that twangy, twangy, twanginess uh, that, uh, yeah, that is not going to sound good. We want some tone. So to get some tone, we come in here to our plugins setting. We go to plugins and EQ and we hit the edit button. Now we can add in. We can add in uh, up to three effects. In fact, we can add up to four effects. We don't need that one. So what we can do is we can hit the plus button here, go to audio unit extensions, and we're going to scroll on down until we find the yellow awesomeness that is Tonebridge. We tap on it there, and that's loaded. Now to change our preset, we simply tap on the yellow there. Here's the last one I used, and this is where Tone Bridge is super cool. If you want to find a particular tone from a particular band and a particular song, you can do it. So I've dialed in here one of my favorite songs of all time. It's the song Breed by Nirvana. Let's see if, can I get away with playing a little bit of it? Copyright, copyright claimers. Oh, gnash your teeth, get ready. Helps if you play it in the right key. That's all I'm going to play. I've probably already got the copyright strike. But you can hear straight away, if you know that song, you can hear that that sounds pretty much like that song. And uh, any other song that you can kind of dream of, you can actually search for. So let's just show you how this works here. Here's some previous searches I've done. Uh, let's go with one of my favorite bands for getting some nice punk guitar tones, which is, of course, Green Day. We search for Green Day. We hit Enter. And here are all the different Green Day tones that people have actually programmed. And they've set them up here in Tonebridge and then allowed them to be shared. It's a community. You can contribute. Others contribute. There's some that are actually created. It's pretty cool. So if we go with a song like um, When I Come Around, we can dial this tone in and uh, can't even remember how to play this. Again, I won't even complete that riff. <laughs> Do have to be so careful here on YouTube. But again, you can hear that that tone it just dials it in and it uses a collection of amps, uh, of amp sims, of pedals, of other stomp boxes, and it just gets you that tone. And then you've got control. Some pretty simple control here. We can dial the effect up. So if we play our tone, we can get more of the effect or less of the effect. So if you want a more subtle kind of tone with more of the clean guitar sound in there, we can bring it on down if we want to uh, go up to 11, you can hear you get a bit more of that feedback. Really cool, yeah? And then of course your volume. So this is just like your standard and you can adjust them over here. <laughs> if, you wanna, if you wanna feel that analog warmth, you can adjust them over here on the actual pedal. And uh, yeah, then you can turn your noise gain on as well. You can turn it on and off by tapping it there. And yeah, that, it's as, it really is as simple as that. Now, I'm not doing justice to the awesomeness that is Tone Bridge, because if you get under the hood, you can do all sorts of tweaking. But you may not know this. Well, no, you probably do. If you've watched the channel before, you know I'm a simple man, and I like simple things. And for me, one of the annoying things is trying to find a guitar tone that works for the song I'm doing. Whereas at the moment, I'm recording a song, and i got some tones in my head based on some other songs, and they're the tones I want to try and dial in. So let's see if we can do this now. Let's get into the actual demo part. Excuse me a moment. Let's get into the actual demo part of this where we are going to record something. So the first tone I'm thinking, uh, any Offspring fans in the house? The tone that I want with this is the tone from the song called Self-Esteem by the Offspring. So if we come in here and we search Offspring like this and hit enter, here we go. So we've got a bunch of the different Offspring songs here. There is Self-Esteem. You've already noticed how cool these look. Like the pedals with the album artwork on there, like how good is that? ridiculous so there is the tone in fact i probably want to come but i'm on the i'm on the bridge pickup at the moment 
a little bit harsh, right? So I probably want to come back either to both pickups or maybe, yeah, maybe I want to come back here to the um, the neck pickup. And then, yeah, because it's a little bit harsh, all I need to do is dial down this effect so we can... Uh, Sounding good. So that's the sort of the sort of harsher tone that I want. So I want this on one side of my guitar, and then I want uh, a different tone on the other side. By the way, thank you to Bubba who has just uh, made a donation. Don't want you to think I didn't see it, Bubba. Thank you, my friend. We're just gonna get into this. We'll chat with everyone a little bit later. Uh, so let's record something, shall we? And we'll. Uh... I'll just turn it down a bit because that's probably a little bit harsh, uh, and probably bring the effect and the volume down a little bit like that. Again, you can just tweak it to your heart's content. All right, so let's uh, let's do this. We'll hit record, so we're all set up here. We can just hit the record button. It'll give us a little count in, and then we'll do the two bars. I missed the start. <laughs> I was too busy playing around with myself. Let's try that again. Hit record. We'll get our four bars, four beats. Three, four. Recorded in, right? Recorded in using tone bridge. It's as simple as that, despite my playing. Anyone else get red light fever where you, you're playing fine and then you hit record and then you're not? Yeah, love it, don't you? So we can solo this out. Here's what our guitar sound sounds like coming through. Pretty cool, yeah? And here's the beautiful part. You know what's actually recorded? Just that. That's what we got. We can change it up just by using that. And, you know, as, as I'm listening to this, I'm like, oh, what if I want to try a different tone? Like, let's just say that self-esteem, not sort of doing it to me. What if I want this when I come around tone on there? Oh, I'll, I'll dial it down because remember, we went a bit nuts with it. We can now take a listen to this. So, yeah, that, w that one with the pickup I'm using, yeah, not so cool. So, we can easily just go back to the original tone we were using, dial our settings back in, and... So there you go, that's how easy it is to record a guitar here. Now, as you may know, if we want to record a second guitar here in GarageBand, we can do so. So all I need to do is duplicate out this first track. There you go, we've got that one there. I'm going to duplicate again. I'm going to use a dummy track because when you're recording along with something, if you're using a two-channel interface, there's a cool little trick that I'm going to show you here, and uh, it's really fun. So we've got our second one here. This time, we want another one. And now I'm going to use this Nirvana Breed tone because I really like this one. I'm going to go back to the bridge pickup, and uh, I'm not monitoring, am I? Well, I did that on purpose. So if we turn the monitoring onto this one now, take the solo off, then we're on this track here. We'll go back into Tone Bridge, like so, and... So we get a little bit more fuzz in this one, right? So the first one's gonna be more of our clicky, trebly kind of sound, and this one's gonna be more of a fuzz tone that we're gonna dial in with this one. So we've got the two set up there. Now the reason I've got this second track here is what I could actually do is on this one, if I go here into my microphone, and I go, not to that, now we go down to channel and we just turn on channel two. So I'm using, again, I'm using a two channel interface here. I'm actually using my X-Tone Pro from X-Sonic, which is a cool guitar centric interface. So I've put this onto the microphone one. I've got no microphone plugged in, but the beauty part is if I cue both of these up, when I'm recording, it's going to stay on this screen. Anyone else annoyed by the fact that when you hit record, it goes to that big microphone image or the big guitar image? Yeah, I don't want that. I want to stay on here. So while we're here, let's just grab this and we'll start start playing around with our panning. We'll push this one a little bit left and then we'll grab this one and push a little bit right just so you can hear like some separation between the guitars. And now when we play, 
we're going to be over here on the right. So let's uh, let's get this cracking, shall we? We'll hit record. And now what I'll be doing, I'll turn this one down a wee bit, and then we're recording along to the drums and our first guitar by playing our second guitar. We arm our second track, and uh, let's hit record and uh, record a second take. Two, three, four. <laughs> That was all sorts of terrible. Now, I'm not here to, to, to actually play the guitar properly, clearly, but uh, I am going to go again. And I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit on these so that you can hear it a wee bit better. So we'll get those volumes back up there. Let's try that one more time with feeling because I forgot to mute on those first chords. So we'll hit record. We'll get our count in. One, two, three. There you go, that's recorded in. So we've got our two sounds, apparently that's what I like to do here. Anyone else use a mouse with your iPad and do that all the time? So now we've got our two tracks, and yes, this dummy track recorded nothing, but how much easier was it recording being able to see their previous track? Very cool, right? So now we can just delete that. I'm gonna leave this, this will be our dummy for the rest of the demo. So let's dial in just these two, we'll take the drums away. Here's our new track. We'll just cut off that front bit because that was just me playing and testing. We don't need that. So this is what this new tone is sounding like. I'm in the wrong effect there, aren't I? I'm like, why am I dialing that and it's doing nothing? I'm in the wrong one. Let's come into this one and play. And see how easy it is to just uh, adjust the amount of fuzz. So I want it fuzzy, but not super fuzzy. So let's just uh, play with this effect until we get the right level of fuzz. Round about there, yeah. Uh, now we can bring in our original guitar and we'll come back and put these together. So here how we've got two different sounds, but both of those are actually, um, yeah, both of those are different. So we're using the same guitar, but I'm just using a different pickup, using the bridge pickup on one, the neck on the other, and then just dialing in completely different tones, playing the exact same part, but listen to the definition you get. You ever been searching for that wall of guitar sound? You can do it here with this. Uh, now, let's, uh, I was going to do a lead part, but we're a little behind on time. So we're going to unplug. Don't do what I just did. Don't don't leave your uh, your sound on while you unplug. And we're going to grab the bass because it's time to slap at a bass or pick at a bass because I don't slap a bass well. But we'll plug in our bass guitar like so. Turn up the level again. There you go. <laughs> We've got our bass going through there. Now, there are bass tones. So if you're a bass player and you're sitting there going, what is in this for me, Pete? I play bass. Don't worry, we got you covered. And the easiest way to do this, if we duplicate out this, now I was, uh, spoiler alert, I was doing a demo of this with, uh, with my patrons yesterday. So they've already seen a sneak peek of this and we were workshopping this to work out where we can find some cool bass tones. And really, the key to this is to just put the word bass in your search. So if we come in here and we search for something, and what we did yesterday was we searched Metallica <laughs> and bass and hit enter. <clears throat> and what you can see there is, see how we've got all of these and then it's got intro and bass. Whoop, we've just lost, we've lost it. Ah, knew that, knew we were, we were doing too well. 
<laughs> we've, lo- we've lost it. Have we still got the audio? Let's just check if the audio is coming through. We do. We've just lost the uh, we've lost the screen. So bear with me one moment. This is the beauty of live. Just chat amongst yourselves while we uh, we we restore our screen sharing here. This may take just a minute or two while we bring it back up, and then uh, yeah, we've got to share the screen, and then we've got to share the audio. And sometimes it just takes a couple of little attempts here because it switches us over to AirPlay mode. And then it goes, uh, clearly I need my new Mac M1. It's sitting there mocking me right now because I'm doing this on my PC and it's like, Pete, this would be so much smoother if you were using me. And I'm like, thank you, Mac M1. Uh, all right, so I'll just need to unplug the interface and cross your fingers and toes, folks, as I plug back in because what we should do is it should re-engage the interface and give us our audio back. There's a little pop. That's always a reasonably good sign. Yeah, there we go. Turn on my audio monitoring and we should be good to go and we should be back. We are back. All right, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by technology, we can actually come in here and, uh, yeah, dial in some bass tones. So we had recently... Are we on the right track now? Yeah, so we're the right track there. Okay, we'll come in here and we'll search. We won't... See, it was when I typed Metallica that the whole thing went bad. So maybe we'll try <laughs> We'll try something different. Uh, what, what's a good bass tone that we can go with? Why don't I go Muse? I've never actually tried this before. This will be a bit of a test. Muse and bass. Yeah, look at that. We've got uh, we've got some Muse songs. What about Starlight? Oh no, that's the whole. So- oh, are these actually bass? No, that. Oh yes, it is. See, it's whole song and bass. So let's go with the Muse bass from Starlight. That's pretty fuzzy bass, right? I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, so let's uh, look at that. How cool is it having the album art? I know. I nerd out on the simple stuff. But there is our like a sound again. We can pump up the effect if we want to really. This is going to be a super fuzzy bass, so we might just turn the effect down and the volume up again. If you've ever used any pedal that's got a tone and a volume knob, there you go. It's got that nice growl to it, this sound, so it'll give it a little bit more of an effect. So let's uh, let's record in. We'll have to turn down our guitar so we'll be able to hear the bass a little bit better and make sure that we've got a balanced level there. Uh, is this going to sound all right? Yep, we're good. So let's record in this bass, shall we? Uh, is our level okay coming in? Might need a little bit more tone, a little bit more level coming through. Let's just turn up the bass a bit. All right, let's play. Let's play. We'll hit record on this one. We'll record in a bass take, and uh, yeah, then we'll then we'll do some tweaking. Then we'll have some fun with this. So again, we'll use our dummy track. We're only monitoring this track, but we're recording these two, so I can stay on this screen. And that's that's the super important thing. Multi-track recording for the win. Let's hit record on this sucker. We're gonna get our two-bar count in. Let's do it. Very simple little bass line in there. And again, we'll delete our dummy track. I know it's a pain to just delete. Oh, I deleted both. I know it's a pain to delete your dummy track after every take. You don't even have to. You can leave that there, just record over it time and time again. So don't worry too much about that. But just to show you the difference, if we only record it on the one track, look at what it does. It does this business. Like, who wants to record blind? Oh, I can't see. And especially once you get into the, your project properly, and if you've got some... Uh, oh, do we undo? Yeah. And you've got some sections set up and you know where your verse and your chorus and stuff are coming in, then it's going to be super, super useful to have that. So let's just take a listen to this bass tone alone, shall we? Oh, we've got it over to the side. That's right. Bring it to the middle. There you go. So we've got that nice fuzzy bass tone. But And again, in the next section, we'll show you. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll put the guitars away. Let's just unplug 
again, never do that. We'll unplug the bass and we'll come back and uh, we will. Oh, there you go. I can get a bit more comfortable, even adjust my camera. Because what we're going to do now is we've recorded our parts. We're going to go in and start tweaking them and changing them around. So, yes, there was a question here about... Um, about the using bass and uh, we've actually got one of the developers. We've got Eugene here from uh, from Tonebridge. Hello to you. Uh, thank you for being here. Always cool to have the folks that are making and developing these apps actually here. And uh, Eugene said before, where was it? Uh, yeah, so you can search for acoustic as well for acoustic guitars. That's something that I just discovered. I was playing around last night and I was looking up an Oasis tune and then it's like Oasis Wonderwall acoustic. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? So it's not only processing for your electric guitars and your bass guitars, there's a whole bunch of acoustic stuff. I think I have to come back and do a whole separate show on acoustic. And you know what? I've got idea. I got idea. I do a weekly live show uh, called The Happy Hour and I play a bunch of covers. How cool would it be if I do a special Tonebridge edition where I play my acoustic through Tonebridge? and I dial in the acoustic song. Let's see how accurately we can reproduce the acoustic tones of those songs. Sorry, I get a bit excited and passionate, as you probably worked out. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, as Desolate Morning saying, Tonebridge is cooler than I thought. Yeah, I agree. So I neglected and reject, not rejected, but I neglected Tonebridge for so long because I thought, oh, you know, it was, it, I'd heard about it and I'm like, oh, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit of a weird novelty concept, you know, maybe it'd be a bit of fun. Nah, um, I used it in my last song. I just dialed in a Pearl Jam tone, tweaked it a little bit and it sounded amazing. And in this tune I'm recording at the moment, again, over on Patreon, no pressure, but if you want to join us, patreon.com slash Pete Johns, I'll actually be recording this whole cover song. By the way, can anyone guess what this cover song is? If you, if you can, let me know in the chat or in the comments. Anyway, let's get back because we've got to uh, we've got to play around with this. So here is our track at the moment. Let's just give it a quick basic mix. I will just delete out this dummy track so that it doesn't confuse me. We'll come back over here. There's our lead in. Cool. So we've got that dialed in, yeah. And again, this is this has been done. We've been 27 minutes live here. I spent 10 minutes setting up. So we've really only been recording and mixing and doing this uh, for 15 minutes. And these are the tones we're getting. So if you if you see, if you invest a little bit more time, we can tweak these and make it sound truly amazing. So I'm pretty impressed with this. Uh, yeah, yeah. And for those that are patrons, you do know the song, but please uh, please keep quiet if you already know it. And we'll, it all will be revealed at the end of the week when we've recorded this sucker. Because again, we're going to be doing a few a few more live shows over on Patreon. Don't worry, we will share it all here on YouTube. But uh, yeah, for my patrons, they're getting a sneak peek into the actual process. Uh, the next section here. So we've recorded recorded our electric guitar. We've recorded our bass guitar. We did show this before, but changing tones shouldn't be, couldn't be easier in Tone Bridge. So if we come back into this one, this bass tone, I'm just not happy with. I need more of a rounder bass. I actually don't want a distorted, fuzzy muse bass. So we can come in here, we can go to Tone Bridge, and we can search again. And let's, uh, what's a good idea? What sort of bass are we actually going to go for here? Um, you know what, I wanted to see if what Foo Fighters we have on board. See if we got a Foo Fighters, because Foo Fighters use a bit more clean bass. Have I spelled that wrong? What have I done? Maybe we don't have any Foo Fighters bass. We'll try, uh, what else should we try? Maybe some Pearl Jam. Let's get some Jeff Ament bass going on here. Pearl Jam bass. And it really depends on if the, the band or the song has a really distinctive bass tone. What am I doing wrong here? Uh, maybe, maybe there's nothing there as well. Let's just check, make sure that Pearl Jam will actually go through. Yeah, Pearl Jam's working. So it may just be that there aren't as many bass tones as there are other tones. Let's just type in <laughs> NAS. <laughs> Let's just type in the word bass and uh, see what we get. Oh, actually, this is what I was using yesterday, the Crazy Town Butterfly bass from the intro, the boom, do, 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 do. So let's try out, let's dial in this bass sound. Again, we solo out the bass just so we can listen to just this tone. Yeah, right, that's better. Got a little bit of delay, a bit of reverb on that bass. That, you know, do, 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 that butterfly song. If I don't get a copyright claim on this video, I'd be super surprised. Because I keep talking about different songs. They're going to be like, you talked about the songs. I didn't play them, really, sort of. All right, so we're going to go with that tone in there. Let's bring this back into our mix now. And you can see again how quick and easy it is to audition new tones. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, that's that's the bass tone we want. Our left tone again. Our right tone, the fuzzier one. I don't know about you, but I think that's kind of rocket along pretty hard. What do you think? Uh, so that's as simple as it is to get ourselves started. Uh, what else have we got? Now, of course, the power of AUV3 is if we want to add extra effects, we can do it here. Now, I meant to do a... Whoop, I nearly knocked over my base. I meant to do a lead part in here so I could actually show this a bit better. But if I had a lead part, or even if you're on your rhythm here... As you can see, we've got all of these extra slots here. So you don't have to just use Tone Bridge by itself. So let's grab this guitar and we'll do a little bit of playing around here. So of course we can do things like EQing. So if we take a listen to this. So because this is my fuzzier guitar, I may want to come in here with the EQ and maybe I don't want as much top end in this one. So we can just. You can just play with your EQ and you can add that in. But of course, if we hit the edit button here, we've got three more slots, right? So we can add in things either before or after tone bridge. So if we're going through here, this is like our guitar tone. Let's say we wanted to add something else to this. So of course you could add things like reverb and delay to this. So what about a little, uh, a little delay? We could just come in here to your track echo. And say we want a little bit of quarter note echo, not too much, but just a little bit on this tone. So we'll dial this in and we'll play it back. So you can hear that, you can quickly add in some echo if you wanted to. Now, wouldn't probably do that with a rhythm part, so we'll just turn that off for now. Uh, and then you wanted to add some more sort of color effects. So we could add a flanger, or we could even come in here and add any of our third party, our other AUV3s. You can even use it in conjunction with an amp sim. So if I wanted to, I could put Stark on here and then Tone Bridge after it, and it's basically like adding pedals to your original amp. So the sky is the limit in terms of what you can actually add in here. But let's just say we wanted something like a flange on here. We can throw the flange on and uh, play this tone now. <laughs> right? Now, would we? No, we're playing rhythm here, so we probably wouldn't. But if you had a, a lead guitar tone in there and you wanted to add some additional stuff to it, super simple to add in even more plugins. Uh, no, Apple, I do not want to update things right now. To add more plugins here to your sound and to uh, really enhance it. And uh, yeah, as I said, the only other thing I wanted to show was using an amp sim as well. So let's just say, instead of recording this clean, we had recorded it into a guitar amp sim. So we'd come in here, we'd select one of our, our garage band clean amps here. So we just leave it on the English combo there. So let's say we've used this one. We can bring our guitar recording, throw it down here onto the guitar GarageBand amp, and then it would have sounded like this. So if you have already recorded guitars and you want to add it in, no problem. We can still load up Tone Bridge on our actual amp track. Now you only get one plug in here. So <laughs> you have already can only have one instance of Tone Bridge here, but we can add this in. And if, you, if you're finding that the Tone Bridge tone doesn't give you enough of that real amp sound, then this is a way that you can work around that. So we throw the Tone Bridge on here. Let's just find another random tone. We don't want the crazy town bass. Who haven't we tried? What's one of my favorite band? Let's see if we've got any killers tones. Any killers guitar tones? The somebody told me killers tone. Let's throw this one on here. And if we play it. Yeah, yeah. So it's layering up those tones and we can we can use both of them. What if we go with the, uh, oh, what's another one we were playing around with? Uh, the Faith No More. This Ashes to Ashes tone from Faith No More is killer. Sounds like this. Super fuzzy, yeah? <laughs> a lot of fun. Again, the sky's the limit here with Tone Bridge. I, I underestimated it for far too long. Won't be underestimating it anymore because it is not only super fun to play with, it can genuinely save you time and get you good guitar tones, at least here in uh, in um, in this. Now, I've got, I've got a suggestion here. Uh, I would suggest, Eugene would suggest, uh, ain't talking about love tone for a solo guitar. So uh, let, let, let's try that tone um, just before, before we finish playing around with this. 
we will uh, we will do this. Uh, we'll come into we'll bring this back onto the just Homebridge track that we had before, and we'll go with we'll go with Eugene's recommendation. Eugene from the, one of our Tonebridge developers, so that's a very cool thing. Uh, ain't talking about love. Let's see if we can search this one out. Ain't talking about love. There you go. All right, let's throw on some Van. Now, whole, we'll go with the whole song, or you can because sometimes you have the intro tone, the main song, and then the main riff and the whole song tone. So you can play around with that. Let's uh, take a listen. <laughs> That's a nice tone. So there's my guitar with nothing added. And then let's throw on this uh, Van Halen. Yeah, yeah. And Eugene says intro is better. All right, let's try intro. Sorry, we're, we're having too much fun here. <laughs> we'll uh, search again. And talking about love. And again, I can't reiterate enough that I am only really scratching the surface of this stuff. Oops, um, it's not letting me search again. Boop, like that. There we go. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Intro. Uh, yes, um, I can't overemphasize how like much depth there is. You can you can go in there and spend a lot of time. If you are the sort of person who wants to get under the hood and play around with it, you can load up the actual app and uh, play around with it yourself. Build your own tones and then bring them on over into your AUV3. That's what's so cool about it. Once you're logged in, it tracks everything. It follows it. You set up your own pedal boards. You set up your own favorites and you can do all of this stuff. So here we go. We've got the intro on here. We soloed it. Yeah, we have. Let's uh, play this. Turn it on. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good example because you can hear on there you got some delay. There's definitely a delay pedal working in there. There's a flanger in that one. So yeah, all of these tones, it looks like one pedal and you treat it as one tone, but it's got a whole bunch of stuff going on behind and you can go in and tweak and play with that over in the app. But yeah, we only had we only had an hour. We're already 36 minutes in and <laughs> I've just uh, been nerding out here on, uh, on Tonebridge. So very, very cool stuff. What do you think? Uh, have you used Tonebridge? Will you be using Tonebridge again? Again, free download. You can go and jump in and download it right now. Uh, now, I know there's uh, there's been... Yeah, in, intro is another level, right? Uh, Talk Dirty to Me by Poison. Oh, we could we could spend uh, we could spend the whole day uh, just um, auditioning different tones here, couldn't we? And that's that's a lot of fun. But I will... I'll let you go and, uh, and play around with that. Uh, Jacob says, uh, yes, this has stimulated my interest and now I'm off to the App Store. I will let you go in just a moment. Um, and yeah, as, as, as Eugene says, uh, for rhythm, it's not great, but it shines on a solo. Yeah, so if you, if you played solo... Oh, you know what? Do we have to just... I have to do it, don't I? I have to grab my guitar and just... Because I didn't do any lead guitar, and uh, that's a shame. And we've got a bit of time. So let's plug back in and play some lead. I can't resist. Can't resist playing a little bit of lead. And while I'm setting up and playing the uh, playing this... Oh, I'll grab my cable. Uh, please ask any questions. Uh, you can ask them of me, but we've got Eugene from Tonebridge here in the chat. So... Uh, uh, he will probably be able to answer your questions a lot better than I can. So take this opportunity, folks. We've got 20 minutes and uh, you can uh, ask your questions away here in the chat. If you're on the replay, uh, don't worry. You can throw your comments down in the chat and uh, in the comment section and we will circle back and uh, have a chat to you. Afterwards, answer any questions there. Let's, uh, let's, grab a, let's set up another track here. We'll put this up the top here. So we'll just duplicate there and we'll bring this whoop, tap and drag so let's do some lead guitar action, shall we? So what did uh, did Gino Gino suggest? Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll use uh, we'll use the tone that we were just playing around with there. So if we go to our search, it should be there. It is the intro, the Van Halen intro, and we'll come in here and we'll do that one there. Is our... Oh, there you go. So uh, yeah, for all you shredders out there. Right. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can just play a little bit of a, a lead riff that goes along with this. I haven't really practiced this, so this is going to be super experimental. Uh, we'll cue up our dummy track, and uh, let's just have some fun with this tone, shall we?
<laughs> Had to do it. That was so much fun. Uh, so, yeah, what a, what a very cool tone. And again, who, what was the other tone that was suggested? The talk dirty to me? Oop, I'm, still, I'm still playing there. So, yeah, there you go. There's Ain't Talking About Love. There's your Van Halen. And, uh, yeah, let's try the talk dirty to me. Da -na 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 -na. Oh, look, it's even got some suggestions. It's like, talk dirty? You want this tone, don't you? Let's, uh, let's throw some poison. <laughs> let's throw some poison on this one. So if we just go to that last little bit, and we'll use the, uh, the talk dirty to me tone on this one. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Uh, I just want to hear that with, uh, with the original tone again. The, the Van Halen on that one. Because the poison was cool, but this was such a cool tone. This may be my favourite lead tone now. You put me onto something cool here, Eugene. <laughs> just the delay of the flange on that one just makes it so much fun to play. All right, let's uh, turn my monitor off there. So we're not hearing that anymore. And uh, put the guitar away now, Pete. Away. Better talk to folks. Yes, the, the Q&A section's shrinking. It's getting shorter and shorter as Pete plays more and more guitar. But that should be a uh, testament itself to how cool the app is. Alrighty. Um, yeah, and, the, and uh, as Will says here, the drums the drums really punch the rhythm. Um, yeah, and I love the sound of the track. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's coming along together. Uh, Tom Rochelle, hello to you. This is sounding great. Great, great tone. Yes, absolutely. Uh, nice tone on the lead part. Yeah, that, that was a good recommendation from Eugene. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Gary Hub says, the, the poison tone is so hot, it'll set your hairspray on Fire, yes. Hair metal for the win. Who doesn't love themselves a wee bit of hair metal? Uh, let's just go back. I, that was a really badly played lead part, but let's just bring it back in and see see what our mix is sounding like here with all of these together now. We'll, uh, we'll lower that lead tone there, and we'll just see what, what, what have we got out of this. Um, we'll delete the dummy track, and let's... Oh, we deleted both of them. Always doing that. Delete the dummy track. And by the way, if you're new to recording guitars, this is sort of next, a bit more advanced. I, don't, I didn't step you through the whole process. If you search my name, Pete John's Garage Band Guitars, I've got about five different videos where I show you the setup and I take you slowly step by step. So if you're just going, I just want to know how to plug in and play my guitar, then uh, yeah, jump in and, and check out the previous videos. But let's, uh, let's take a listen. We'll do a quick static mix, shall we, uh, on this track here now. <laughs> Sorry, I won't, I won't let you listening listen to my self-flagellating uh, shredding at the end there, because I'm not a good shredder. <laughs> I try what I what I lack in uh, what I lack in talent, I make up for in passion, and that's important. It's important to have passion, folks. Uh, righty go, okay. Let's jump on over and uh, and see if we've got any other folks. Uh, tons of mega death. So we've got a question here um, from Dan Eckberg. It says, uh, "Is there some mega death?" And uh, Eugene says, "There is tons of mega death." <laughs> <laughs> and it is amazing. So when Jade did her review, she jumped in here and she checked out some pretty obscure bands, like especially in the metal and the heavy rock genres where guitar tone is king. There is a lot of very cool, uh, very cool bands. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tempted. Let, let me know if you, if you want me to. Uh, yeah, Pete cuts off his own, own solo. Um, yeah, it's, um, I'm very tempted to try out the acoustic tones. If you want me to plug in my acoustic, let me know. Just say acoustic yes in the chat if you want a quick acoustic demo before we finish up. Um, Jade says, please mention the Q&A, Pete. You need to merge and bounce each track before closing the app or track. All tracks will revert to one tone. It's an issue with AUV3 in the app. Is that the case? That's uh, okay. Let's uh, let's have a quick look at that and maybe um, maybe Eugene has some info on that if, if that is the case. So let's just... Uh, Let's just have a look here. So if we've got this one, the, the AUV3 tones, we've got the Ain't Talking About Love. We'll, we'll try this because we can easily dial them back in afterwards. We got, so it is, okay. So it is showing the, the, the different names there. Even though we've got different pedals, 
they're all they're all named the most recent one. So that is something to keep in mind. Even though we're using the four different tones, uh, you can tell by the album, the image art there. Again, iOS 14.2 has done some weird things with AUV3 plugins. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, I'm just going to close out and go back in and see what this is going to do to us. So here is uh, our original bass tone, which we'll play. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. So it, it has, it looks like it has, even though that's saying, that's saying it's the, oh, that's now the ashes to ashes tone there whereas that was our bass tone and what's this one doing yeah that's got ashes to ashes as well so yeah it looks like once we before we close out our project <laughs> which in hindsight i should have done on your advice here jade that we should have actually done that because even though it's showing the album artwork now it's uh, it's made all of those uh yeah so that they're all they're all the same um so that that is something to keep in mind um yeah well we might do we might do an acoustic acoustic trial in a minute but uh <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. So they're all that one. That's why, yeah. So they're all the, the last one that I added there, which is something to keep in mind. So, uh, yeah, thank you for the tip, Jade. And uh, I, will, I will endeavor to do that. So I'm going to go back in here and uh, redial in these tones when we go to there. Uh, cool. So, uh, yeah, if, if you do have any other questions, uh, and yeah, so Eugene addressed that in chat. Cool. Uh, so Eugene, once you close the app, it changed. Yeah, got it. Cool. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, did, I didn't catch up. But uh, yeah, so that's the case in the current version. Uh, hopefully, uh, it'll go if the app gets an update. No guarantees, though. Yeah, and hey, it, it's still pretty cool. For free, for the cost of entry, that's pretty darn cool. So if, you, if, you're, wondering, uh, if you're wondering what we mean by that, let's, uh, let's show you. So with this one, so we know that, say we want to keep this lead, this lead tone here. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> this one. So before you close your app and once you're happy with that tone, and we'll show this again over on Patreon when we do this through the week, we just tap on this one and we hit the merge button. What that's going to do is actually merge and normalize this track. So we'll do that. We'll hit the merge button and that merges this track into itself. So it creates a new version of your project, normalizes the track. You'll then need to turn it down because it's going to crank it up. And now there's basically, this is a clean audio track, but it's got the effects baked in. So... There you go. So yeah, you will need to do that before you actually exit out. So small, again, small price to pay, small caveat there. And uh, thank you to, to Eugene and Jade for uh, informing of that one. Uh, we've only got one person saying that we should have the acoustic. We might have to save it for another <laughs> for another day. So uh, oh, I know we do have, we've got several. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll do it. We'll do a quick acoustic demo sometimes. Uh, all right, where's my, where's my cable? Every time, every time I say I'm not playing any more guitar, I have to, I have to re-get the cable and do it all again. So, uh, bear with me one moment. This is all very professional stuff, but I'll reach over. Luckily, all my guitars are pretty close at hand at any given time. We'll plug in the Taylor. And uh, what's the thing is, I'm not going to use, I'm not going, oh, now I've lost my pick. Grab this one. Uh, I, I can't play the actual songs, but just so that we can test how these tones actually work, let's have a quick play. So we'll come in here. We will grab a new track. No, don't want to do that iPad. We'll grab a new track. We'll go to our audio recorder. We'll hit the more sounds and we'll go to fun and clean. Make sure we've got a clean tone on here. Go to our effects. Getting good at this. Getting used to doing it. Add in the tone bridge. The tone bridge for the metal, or in this case, the acoustic. And what do we reckon? What tone, acoustic tone, shall I dial in? The one that, the one that comes to me is uh, the Wonderwall tone from Oasis. So I wonder if we search that. There you go. Wonderwall intro acoustic. So if we tap on that one, what we'll do is we'll, we've got the monitoring off at the moment here. So we'll uh, we'll play through. Now this, I'll just make sure it's. Yep. So we're definitely coming through. Uh, we'll turn the monitoring on without tone bridge. <sighs> Wrong spot. There we go. We'll turn the monitoring on. So that should be coming through now. Yep, so you can hear the, the acoustic tone coming through. Let's now turn on the acoustic tone. Come in here to tone bridge, turn it on. And what do we get?
that's a nice tone. You can hear it's added a little reverb. Maybe a little compression on there. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to uh, play around with this because just one more time to hear the difference. So here it is without it. And then we'll add tone bridge in here. You can hear it just sort of kicks it in a bit. And it, once again, just like you can with the, uh, with the electric, you can choose how much of the effect you actually want in there. So if it's a little bit overpowering, you can bring it back on up. There you go. Nice. Yeah, it's just got that cool little bit of decay on there, doesn't it? I like it. So, yeah, there you go. Your acoustic players, you're covered as well. You're sorted. So, um, yeah. Uh, we've got some talk about audio interfaces. So, yeah, before we finish up, because uh, we've only got five minutes left, yeah, if you are looking for a guitar-based audio interface, what I'm using here, as I said, is the X-Tone Pro by X-Sonic, the Smart Stomp, and it is very cool. It's a fairly high-end guitar-centric interface. It's got the pedals so you can control your stomp boxes. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. I'll be reviewing that more in more detail in the next couple of weeks. But um, I use the Steinberg UR22C. I find that a very, very cool option uh, for guitars. And uh, as I think Eugene in the chat is saying here, the iRig HD series or the iRig Pro series are also very cool. So I would, uh, I would, com I would uh, consider those. So what I use here for portability is is the iRig Pro I.O. So that combines the, the good parts of an iRig HD because you get the decent quality guitar recording and you get a preamp with 48 volts of phantom power. So if you're a vocalist and a guitarist, I'd go for the iRig Pro I.O. If you're just a guitarist, the iRig HD 2, as uh, Eugene here in the chat has recommended, is always a good option. If you are, are on the go and if you're setting up in your home studio, something like a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, a Steinberg UR22C, those are good options in my view and you can go on over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear if you want to find out all of my gear recommendations let's check for the last time here and make sure that we don't have any other final comments uh, <laughs> uh i don't think anyone yes yeah, so we've got folks uh oh by the way jade uh, jade show kicks off in what was 12 minutes about six minutes now so please go and uh, uh she'll kick off by showing off her saved preset pedal boards in tone bridge for fun so there you go drop the link to that one jade uh because i'm going to run out of time to put it there so please put it put the link in the chat now and uh yeah just uh, jump in and go over to jade's channel because she is uh she's going to be playing around and she'll give you a demo because i've seen them she demoed them in a, in a recent video and she's got some ridiculous pedal boards jade's a big metal fan and there are all the metal tones in there absolutely uh danny broderick what about the uh roll and go mixer pro yeah it's uh that is a good option too i have one of those i've used that it's back there somewhere or in the shelf um yeah go mixer pro works well as well especially if you're doing live stuff in fact that would be a good device for me to use i might even do that I might use that in the happy hour this week. I'll do a mobile happy hour where I'm using just my iPad and my iPhone to record the video, sending the audio out from the iPad into the iPhone via the Roll and Go Mixer Pro. That could be a fun thing. It could be a lot of fun. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Eugene. It was a surprise. Eugene uh, rocked up at the start of the stream and uh, did all the hard work for me. So that's great. So thank you for being here, Eugene. And uh, yeah, don't hassle him too much if you, if you find him online and ask him too many questions <laughs> about uh, Tone Bridge. But yeah, uh, like I said, all through this week, I'll be doing some more Tone Bridge recording. Uh, I'll probably do another video on this later in the week once I've sort of recorded down my guitar tones just to give a bit more detail. And uh, yeah, check out Jade's channel as well because she's got uh, a heap of information about it. Uh, righty dokey, we're going to finish up here because uh, uh, we, we, need to, we need to be done and uh, I've showed enough. So once again, to summarize, Tone Bridge free. Download it from your app store, install it, use it as an AUV3 plugin. Keep in mind that at the moment it will reset your pedals when you leave and come back in in GarageBand. So do merge down your tracks once you've dialed in your tone. You could also 
like keep a copy. So here's the other thing what I'd recommend is keep a copy. Let's just show you this real quick. Sorry. Keep a copy of your other track before you merge down. So let's just say, we'll, we'll come back here. Sorry, I keep trying to leave and then thinking of one more thing, like Steve Jobs. Uh, so if you've got this tone here, what I would actually do is before you merge it, duplicate that track out, then copy this one so you can keep an original copy of your audio because if you want to then change the tone down the track, you want to have that original audio there. So what you do now is just rename this like uh, guitar track original or clean audio, merge this one down with your tone bridge settings, and then you've got your clean and your tone bridge. That way, if you want to go back and tweak the tone, so you're like, oh, I really wish I'd used a little less or a little more of that effect, you can come back to your clean version and redo it. That would be a, a workaround I would recommend in the meantime before, uh, before we have a fix on that problem. Alrighty, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, please uh, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, keep rocking out, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Cheers.